The second type of man you should never marry is a man who is bad with money. Oh, here we go. So again, this is the series of uh, Stefan Speaks, who uh, you know he, he's a he's a dating coach for for women, and again. Stefan's main thing is uh, deflecting as much responsibility as possible away from women and onto men. Um, so, of course, if he's bad, like... Yes, money is one of the biggest problems in relationships. But I think I know where Stefan's gonna go with this. With the, if he's bad with money. Let's, let's see if I'm right. So, there's a few ways to look at this, alright? But let me start off by saying... What I, one, I think we, we all know and can agree that finances is one of the biggest contributors yep. of divorce. But I think what people don't understand. Oh, by the way, divorce statistics are as follows, just for the people who are curious, okay? Um, 50, more than 50% of divorces, uh, so sorry, more than 50% of relationships end in divorce, like marriages, I mean. And uh, 75 to 80 percent of divorces are initiated by women, uh, and uh, divorces are no fault, which means you can divorce for any reason. And very often, even prenuptial agreements get thrown uh, thrown out in court. So, uh, just so you know, guys, just so you know, is it's it's less about not making enough money. Like a lot of people don't have. No, no, it's it's also about not making enough money. For guys under six figures, some girls will not even be interested. And not some, a lot in 2022. I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people don't have a I don't make enough money issue. They have a money management issue, all right? So, for example, I remember this couple, they were married, and they was always broke. <laughs> like, these folks stayed broke, right? But at the time... They both the 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 husband and the wife had uh, low paying jobs, and then at one point it was just the wife working. Okay. Okay. So how is it not a money making issue then? If they both had low paying jobs, I I fail to understand. Okay. Anyway. And then time goes on. You know they're pushing along. They're pushing along. The husband finally gets a good job. All right, paying good money. The wife doubles her salary, and I'm thinking, okay, they, they made it. They're good. No more problems. Guess what? They were still broke, all right? Like, nothing changed. They were still paycheck to paycheck, not because random things were happening that sucked up their finances, things that we just can't control. No, they were horrible managers of money, all right? Now, in this situation, it was... Okay. So let me uh, explain a little bit about this uh, this money thing in 2022, okay? So some red flags to look out for, okay? Uh, the girl asking you to merge finances. Uh, yeah, that's a red flag. We, we're not out here merging finances. You need to keep your bank account separate because uh, women do this thing where it's my money is my money and your money is our money, right? They do this. They do this thing. And uh, so we're not out here, uh, you know, uh, merging finances. Um, and what a lot of these girls will do is, you know, on the first date, on the second date, they'll fish for your income. So if these girls are just looking for a meal ticket, they're going to fish for your income. What What do you do? You know, what do you do for work? And, uh, you know, um, they'll appear to perk up um, when you tell them what your job is. Like, oh, I'm an accountant. Oh, I'm a programmer. Oh, I'm an engineer, whatever. But then when you try to take them home or whatever, they're like, no, no, I'm not that kind of girl. I don't do that. I don't X, Y, Z. And then they're going to spend their time, you know, uh, filibustering you. Like, let's see how much, how long I can make him wait for bedroom fun, right? Um, and these kind of girls, yeah, they're not, they're, they were never interested in you. They're just interested in your money. They're, they're interested in uh, you as a meal ticket. They're interested in getting you in a marriage and then divorcing you for your, for your finances, right? Wow, they're alpha widows, right? They, they have a child on the side or, you know, they were alpha widowed previously by Chad and you're the not good enough meal ticket option. Um, so again, we're avoiding girls like this, like the plague. 
Hello and welcome to Helios blog. My name is Helios here for another reaction video. If you're new to the channel, liking the content, please hit the sub, hit all for notifications. If you'd like to support me, I do have a Patreon with exclusive content, patreon.com slash the Helios blog. Just go there and subscribe to any tier. Any level of support is appreciated. Um, although I would recommend the default tier. It's it's a good one. Uh, I believe it's called uh, Solar System or Cosmos, something like that. All right. Uh, let's continue. It was both of them. But if it's both of you, then it's super, a big time problem. But when evaluating the type of man you should be entertaining, you've got to look deeper than how much is he making. It's how does he handle his finances? Because a man who has not become a good steward of his money can easily destroy not just his life, but your life with him. All right. This is actually like, again, uh, I would give this advice to men of, uh, like, we're not out here getting with girls that have gigantic debts. Because that's another thing, right? So, sh he says you need to marry a guy who's good with his money, right? But there is no mention made that women should not have serious debts going into marriage. We're not out here picking up $10,000 of debt for our, for our wife or for our girlfriend. No, no. If she has $10,000 of debt, that is a no marry ever proposition. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're not out here marrying girls that have debts and solving their debt problem for them. No, the debt problem is their problem, not your problem. You understand? All right. Can completely derail everything because True. he has not become disciplined with his finances. So... Before I even add to that, let me say this. In addition to... Well, no, let me finish this point. I'm sorry. <laughs> so he, he has to learn how to do that. Now, listen, I'm going to throw this caveat in there. Because are there plenty of people who are married where the man is not the greatest with the finances and they're actually doing well in the marriage? That does exist. But in those scenarios, the man has forfeited all power and authority to the wife to handle the finances. If this is agreed, an agreed upon structure with you too, all right, to the point where you know you have enough control that you don't have to worry about his shortcomings in that area, okay, I'm... No, 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 this is terrible advice, right? The man has relinquished authority and control. No, the man is the authority, the man is in control. You see what I'm saying? So we're not out here relinquishing authority and control of the finances to our girl. No, because then that further exacerbates the my money is my money and your money is our money thing. It makes it 10 times as bad. That's how you lose your money to bullshit expenditures, right? Like, no, like that's how you get. No, 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 no. We're not out here doing that. So again, this is terrible advice, right? Like, Stefan. Why are you out here implying that a girl can ever have a happy marriage when she's in control of everything? How can, how can you possibly say that to your audience with a straight face? How can you say that? You can't say that. I'm not going to argue that because, again, can that work? Can that be managed if both people are on the same page with that? Yes. Outside of that, though, I would still argue you want to encourage this man if you're dating him or you want to see that in him first. That he learns to have some basic fundamental discipline. Again, look, 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 look. Look at the implication here. The implication is this. The girl should train the guy to be responsible. What's the further implication? The further implication is that the girl is more responsible than the guy. What's the further implication? The further implication is that women in general are more responsible than men. What's the further implication? The further implication is that men are incapable and women are capable. That is what Stefan is implying by his advice. It's, 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 it's man-hating advice, frankly. It's, it's advice that's against men. Stefan, why are you implying that men are incapable of controlling their finances? Why are you implying th this, this sort of thing? Like, again, we should look at the statistics to see who, who is actually capable of managing the money better, men or women. Because, again, I'm... Stefan, disaster. When it comes to money. However, again, you can't make it work if he hands over the power to you. No, but you can't. But if that's not going to happen then absolutely his 
inability to be good with money is a problem. So when you are dating, when you're in a relationship with a man. Again, what is the implication, Stefan? The implication is that girls choose the poor Chad and they shouldn't choose the poor Chad. Why aren't you telling the, the girls not to choose that guy in the first place? Man, it's like... The actionable advice is be smart in your choices, right? They should never even date a guy like that. Go on one coffee date and figure it out, right? Okay, anyway. Man, you've got to go deeper in seeing, does he even have savings? Does he budget at all? And I'm not saying like budget, for example, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I, I'm very good with my money. Do I have a very set budget? No. So is a budget an end-all, be-all? No, but it, again, if he does have a budget, that says something. I again, like, like, look. Like, look, guys. Look. What is he saying? He's saying, marry Beta Billy, right? But what, what should he be saying? He should be saying, marry Beta Billy from the age of 18 to 23. Again, Stefan's advice does not, like, it's not actionable advice. It's not advice that'll actually work, right? Like, again, this, <laughs> there's nothing here that has any benefit for men, right? He's just saying, Look for this guy, look for that guy, choose that guy, it's never your fault, it's always, you know, you, you have to choose this, you have to, like, but there's no what women have to do, what women have to say, what women have to be, what age women have to be, what their income has to be, what, like, there's no what do women bring to the table, there's none of that. All right, let's go on to our article by Rollo. All right, uh, what's the article called? Women and bedroom fun. Booty is so strong that there are dudes willing to... <clears throat> uh, too spicy for YouTube. For the highly unlikely possibility of booty in another dimension. There are no chicks willing to do this thing that's too spicy for YouTube. For, uh, for bedroom fun. Joe Rogan. One of the single most annoying tropes I read or hear from men is that women are just as or more bedroom fun oriented than men. Nothing stops me in my tracks more abruptly than reading this line parroted back in some form of self-effacing white knight trying to convince himself, hope against hope, that it could be true. This is a very effective feminine social convention, even internalized and spouted back by the likes of more than a few infamous uh, players. This fantasy belongs among the higher order social convention myths like the myth of the sexual peak. Just a rudimentary knowledge of female biology is all that's needed to deconstruct the myth. Women are more bedroom fun oriented than men, but they're repressed due to a lack of trust. Ah, uh, no. Patently false. A healthy male produces between 12 to 7 times, uh, 17 times the amount of testosterone a woman does. It's a biological impossibility for a woman to want bedroom fun as much as or as often as men. Trust me, when a woman says, I don't understand why bedroom fun is so important to guys, she's speaking the literal truth. No woman will ever experience 17 times the amount of her normal testosterone levels, barring using illicit substances. Amongst its many other effects, testosterone is the primary hormone involved with stimulating human libido. I should also add that on average and barring environmental variables, a man's testosterone only declines 1% per year beyond age 40. So even at age 60, the average healthy male is only dealing with an average of 20% deficit in testosterone. Critics of this observation like to argue that for female uh, response and arousal, testosterone isn't the only factor to consider. To which I'll agree, however, it's the primary factor. A woman cannot possibly understand what 12 to 17 times their present amount of testosterone could feel like without using illicit substances. In fact, the first ever female bodybuilders report that cycling anabolic um, substances is a hundredfold increase in bedroom fun interest and libido. So in terms of natural feminine hormonal biochemical response, there is no unaltered way a woman could ever make an accurate comparison to what a man's baseline libido is in relation to her own. Women's bedroom fun desire is also cyclical. Even at the peak of her ovulatory cycle when she's at her uh, most incl inclined to have bedroom fun, she'll never experience what men do 24 hours a day. This is the root of the myth and the source of the social convention. Other critics would erroneously argue that estrogen plays a part in female arousal. They'd be wrong. 
Estrogen does not control libido. For men, estrogen... Um, and and uh, here. So, just, just listen to this. Like men, women rely on testosterone to maintain libido, bone density, and muscle mass throughout their lives. In men, estrogen simply lower testosterone, decrease muscle mass, stunt growth in teenagers, introduce gynecomastia, increase feminine characteristics, and decrease susceptibility to prostate cancer. Se uh, bedroom fund desire is dependent on androgen levels rather than estrogen levels. So there you go. Okay, so you can go read more of this on the rational mail. Let's continue with this terrible advice from Stefan. I, I've yet to meet people who have actual budgets, structured budgets, and aren't managing their money well. Typically, that shows someone who's very conscious and aware of their finances and trying to handle it in a very effective manner. So you want to look at that, savings, budgeting, you know, what else does he have? How does he think ahead when it comes to money? How are his spending habits? Is he able to pay his bills on his own? Or is he constantly asking to borrow money? That's a very important thing. And I say it because... Right, of course. So if the guy is constantly asking to borrow money and debt, etc., I mean, it's it's very bad, right? People that are bad at managing money, like, they... Yeah, it's it's true. Like, this, this is good advice. And guys, I would actually recommend that you look for this sort of thing in your girl. If she's not good at handling money, uh, it's going to be bad news bears for you. You're going to have to train that behavior, basically, which is very annoying. There's so many women with men who are always asking you to borrow money. Now, listen, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Again, why are girls choosing men like this? Well, if they're in the top 5 to 10% of looks, have a six pack or tall, whatever, those men also known as chads, they can get away with it, right? And that's why some of these girls are dating men like this. But, like, again, if they're doing that, they're making terrible decisions, right? And, and that decision is going to bite them in the butt later on when they're older, right? Like you can't be, like, with irresponsible men when you're younger, and then when you're older, expect to get a nice, responsible guy, and everything will be fine. Like, you'll just get into that situation, like, in the last video, where the girl married this 40-year-old guy who was, like, super nice, and all of a sudden he just turned on her, right? When he realized the grass is greener on the other side, uh, because she was treating him terribly, because she'd been alpha-widowed, of course. Disaster. I am not a fan of a woman lending men, uh, men money. I, I, I'm not going to sit there and say that you're wrong if you do, that you're not allowed to if you're in a relationship to do it. Again, like, if, if you as a man are asking for money from your girl, like, there's something seriously wrong. But again, like, this guy here, that he's even implying that this could be possible, I mean, says everything it needs to say, right? Like, his advice is terrible. Like, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, this, this guy, like, is, it's just total femme-centric hogwash, basically. I, like, I don't know what else to say. I'm just not keen on it, Okay. So again, he never ever, he doesn't have a strong stance on anything. Uh, there's no uh, accountability being held towards women. There's no talk of what women need to bring to the table. Uh, there's, there's no like, you know what? I'm going to go to his channel and I, I'm, I'm going to check out to see if he ever does talk to what women need to bring to the table. And I'll bet it's, it's total feminized hogwash. Like none of it is actually useful. It'd be like, he wants somebody who's strong and independent. He wants somebody that can manage her own money. He wants somebody that, I'll bet that's what his advice is. Like it's just, to, it's going to be totally wrong, totally um, inaccurate, totally BS. Um, and just for the purpose of him uh, enriching himself effectively because the advice is terrible. But if it's once in a while, once in a blue moon, you know, things really happen and, and he just needs help for a moment and he doesn't have a bad track record of any kind when it comes to money, all right, I, I, I'm a little more flexible, right? Again, like, wh what is the idea here? He's saying, again, women, you control the frame, you make the decisions, you choose if you're going to take this, you, you, you know, if he has a good track record, he's good, if he has a bad track record, he's bad, you know, like, it's, it's, it's like... Women are judging and choosing the men and th there's n there's no accountability being put on the women. Like, what what benefits are the men getting for what you're asking? That's what I want. That, that's what I want to know. And you as a female dating coach, what are you telling women to bring to the table in order to get these things that you're looking for? 
What Stefan is basically doing is teaching women how to be more choosy without explaining that men actually want something too, which is egregious. Right? But when you're starting to see a pattern where he's always needing to borrow, this shows you this man is not properly managing his money. Plain and simple. And again, you cannot overlook that. But I'm going to go a step further. It's not just money management. Is, is he too stingy with his money? Ah, here we go. <laughs> is he too stingy with his money? Is he not buying you nice things all the time? Ah, now we get to the crux of the matter. Because here's the other thing women don't consider, or some women aren't considering. I've seen women get excited about dating a guy. Let's say the guy's a doctor, okay? And he's making over 200K a year. Here we go. But what you don't know is he ain't spending a dollar on your body, okay? As far as he's concerned, his money is his money, all right? Do not assume because he is a doctor, because he ha makes a, he's a high earner, that he's going to be a generous man. Or he's going to be a man willing to pour into you financially in any kind of way. That is not an automatic. Exactly. And you should only choose men that are automatically going to, you know, financially support you. Also known as a, a useful idiot. You know, a guy who... Um, he loses it all when he's with a girl. He just, oh, I just love you so much. I'll, I'll buy you all the nice things. I'll do all the nice things for you. I'll, spend, I'll take you to fancy dinners. I'll take you to fancy restaurants. I'll, it, it's just, it's such terrible advice. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, all of this is just teaching women how to be better at, like, becoming more picky. Right? That's it. All it's doing is encouraging women to be more picky, while at the same time, not telling them to bring anything to the table. So it's it's just, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, it's terrible advice. It's awful advice. It's possibly the worst advice I've ever heard for girls, like, from any uh, dating coach. All right? So I've seen women get caught up with men who have money, but who are very stingy. And I've seen... I have seen the, the, the stress, the frustration, the animosity it creates in the relationship. Right. If you don't just open up your wallet and give me everything you have, then it's then you're so bad. You're a terrible person. It's awful. Bad man. Bad, bad man. Not opening your wallet for me. Bad man. <laughs> Disaster. You could argue it's even worse than a guy, being with a guy who's struggling because him struggling and unable to pour into you financially, there may be some sympathy there. <laughs> there may be some some more patience because like, oh, okay, he's broke or he doesn't. Have yeah, being with a broke guy, no girl wants to be with a broke guy like ever, right? It's six feet tall, six pack abs, uh, six inch rocket, and six figure income. And if he doesn't have that in 2022, then he's not Chad, so I'm not interested. That's, like, that's basically, like, Stefan just basically teaches girls how to get with this 6666 guy and not bring anything to the table. That's it. <laughs> like, there's nothing more I can see that this guy is doing. He's doing nothing useful. Have it right now. Okay, fine. But when he got it, you know he has it? And he's still not giving it to you? Oh, you're going to feel some kind of way. You're, you're exactly, you see? Like, just the, the worst possible advice, teaching women to be, like, very bad. And, like, how could you possibly think that that's going to turn out well for, for women? It's just such bad advice. All right. Uh, let's go on to the relationship advice. This was posted two hours ago. I get annoyed when my boyfriend wants to spend time with me. 
I get annoyed when he wants to cuddle me, when he wants to have bedroom fun, when he wants to hold my hand, when he's at home with me. I don't like kissing him and touching him. I'm not even bedroom fun attracted to him these days. Maybe I don't love him anymore. Since we've been living together two months, my attraction to him definitely plummeted, and I cannot afford to live on my own. I also suffer from BPD. So I don't know if that could be the reason why. P.S. I'm in a therapy group. So literally she had crazy bedroom fun to convince the guy to move in together. Then when they moved in together, it's it's into discard territory. Now she's going to go sleep with Chad. Wonderful. Edit. Some people told me to add a following detail to the story. A few days after moving in together, we had a big fight. Police involved and all. Lovely. He broke my valued objects and my work computer, a very expensive Mac PC, and it was traumatizing. He still didn't pay me back for the stuff he broke, and my work is claiming their money. I'm afraid if we break up, he won't pay me back at all. Also, we almost went to court, but we removed our claims. Since that day, I don't see him the same way at all. Yeah, so she... I mean... If you know anything about Amber Heard, you know that BPD is a never. You don't move in with that, you don't date that, you don't associate with that. That's very dangerous, as you can see. Police involved in the fight. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 58 upvotes. Can you even call this a relationship at this point? Like, what is the point? What are you getting out of it? Exactly! You see? She can't afford rent on her own. Yeah. Uh, disaster. Yeah, again, it's like, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. It's a terrible situation. All right. Um, again, guys, thank you so much for listening. If you're new to the channel, like in the content, hit the sub, hit all for notifications. If you'd like to support me, uh, I do have a Patreon with exclusive content. Just go there and subscribe to the default tier. I believe it's called Soda System. Um, Again, I really do appreciate your support. Thank you for spending the time, taking the time out of your busy day to listen to my videos, especially if you took the time to listen to the end. Really do appreciate it, guys. You're wonderful, and I will see you next time.